Hey, how are you? Good evening. It's Friday. We made it through Friday. We made it through the entire week. When does a week actually end? Does it uh, end on Saturday? Does it end on Sunday? Your day of rest and the new week begins on Monday. I guess that's how it works. Sunday it ends. All right. That's a test question. I don't know if I've got that right. But uh, I would say uh, ends on Sunday at midnight. <laughs> the week ends. But Friday we're here at the week end. All right. It's pretty awesome. Fridays are exciting. Saturdays are exciting. And Sundays are my favorite. The most exciting. Uh, but every day can be and will be exciting with Christ, with God. Because you don't know what he's going to do with your life. And you know he's going to bring you at the same time excitement and joy. But then peace. And he's going to teach you some stuff. to got your knowledge and wisdom. And he's going to give you some insight into some things that are going on into the world. Or at your workplace or in your home. Or with the members of your family. So it's very exciting because that's what we want. We want more knowledge and wisdom to help us. Um. We don't want to improve. We want to evolve, you know, as um, as humans, as Christians, uh, so we can take over the world. <laughs> no. We just want to be honorable and pleasing to God, our Heavenly Father that created the whole entire world. The Holy Spirit is in us. We are heirs with Him. He calls us friends now. We're no longer... Uh, we serve. We're not... S we serve a sheep. We take care of a sheep. We do what He says. <laughs> just like... Jesus' mom said at the wedding, he says, she said after they ran out of wine, and Jesus' first miracle was to turn water into wine, and uh, yeah, he said, woman, it's not my time yet, but then she, after that, he's just, they're all dancing and partying out there, but yeah, he gets up and he, uh, he does it, he says, go do this, go get this, and fill this with this, and uh, <laughs> the mom says to the servants, you do whatever he tells you to do. I took that to heart. You do whatever he tells you to do. <sighs> wow. That's obedience right there. That's faith in God. Whatever he tells you to do is in that playbook. It's in that Bible, the Holy Scriptures, all right? So remember that. That is our playbook. That is our instruction manual that we go by to live lives that are holy and righteous and honorable to God that glorify God and uh, how we can help serve uh, serve and love his sheep and feed his sheep as John 21 says and uh, live um, blessed lives even prosperous lives and abundant lives yes he wants that for us too but he wants us mostly to be a living sacrifice but when we lay down our lives and pick up the cross uh, and bless others and we're generous we're good stewards of what he gives us and then we're generous with what he gives us. He will give you more because you, um, you're you a child. You're his child that he loves. And he's like, wow, that's my child. That's my child. I want to I want to show them that I appreciate and most of all love them uh, so, so much. Uh, we don't do it for the blessings, but we just... He gives. He really does. Just the, the gifts of the talents, right? To the uh, To the one that buried it in the ground he called them a fool or maybe he said something along that lines uh but the one that made interest on it he the one that doubled what he was given he said give everything to him and uh yeah so because you do well with what you're given and you're taking care of his sheep and you're being obedient doing what he says so uh Hopefully all through the week you're you're doing that, glorifying God, using your gifts and your talents, you're loving on his people, you're feeding his sheep, taking care of his sheep. We are shepherds, our pastors are there to keep us in line too. The body of Christ is there, our accountability partners, but most of all, word of God, prayer, word of God, prayer, meditating all day on the word of God, always being in constant connection, communication with God. I always say that's that good Wi-Fi connection. Uh, this is Ethernet almost, but it's Wi-Fi. It's Wi-Fi, but it's um, uh, faster than Spectrum offers, fa faster than Century Liquid Fiber Optic offers. Uh, it's the best. You'll know. Pray about it, and you'll get a feeling. You'll, you'll know you'll be at peace about things, whether you're going to do things or not go do things, or be in this relationship or not, or change this job or not, or go to this school or not. Or should I say this thing to this one person or not? Uh, 
Elite. That's what makes it so awesome to have faith. Faith that you know it's all going to work out for us who love Christ. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Three minute devotion. Uh, three minute devotion. It is um, titled No Turning Back. It is from Galatians. Galatians 4 9. It should be interesting. That's why I put excited. I don't read these first. I just come home and try to try to read this. Um, get my mind where it's supposed to be at after eight hours of working, doing something super awesome and super fun that I, I that I get to do. That is a privilege, and I couldn't think of anything better. But I know there is. But for this moment, I couldn't think of anything better because uh, God wants the best for us. Yeah, I don't know. I've always tried to reason it out, but there's a reason that he's got me where I'm at now. And like, when I really look at it, I'm like, ah, this is pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, so cool. We got to do this devotional. All right. But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? Galatians 4, 9. Okay, I didn't think there was going to be anything about that. We'll see. Most men tend to default to the familiar. The Jews in Galatia were no exceptions. After hearing the gospel and responding to it, they knew God in a far more intimate way than when they were trying to keep the ceremonial law. None of those practices had any inherent spiritual power. They were shadows of the gospel to come. Yet Paul was writing to the Galatian church with a heavy heart, knowing that they had slipped back into their old ways. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain, he wrote in verse 11, Galatians 4.11. Today you struggle with other empty rituals such as performance-based Christianity. Formerly you believed you could earn your way to heaven by good works. Even though you've left that notion behind, you may return to it when you believe your performance is a reflection of spiritual strength. Reject such notions. Return to the power of Christ in you. It's a faith-filled life. People are going to know us by our love, and they're going to know us and respect us by our faith, because uh, they all know who God is. They know who Jesus is, and do you know who my Father is? <laughs> They're going to they're gonna see our faith. They're going to see that we're the light. And they will also see our good works and the fruit from the good works and the fruit from being in a close relationship with God. But that's not why we do it. But um, none of this is performance-based because, really, you're probably doing quite well. Um, not measuring it the way the world measures it. But um, if you want to, go to a third world con country. Think of clean water. Think of bathrooms and showers and, and food, and shelter, and AC. Think about that stuff, or just being able to walk out to the mailbox, get your mail, and come back in just like that, and the AC's on, and your water, you do this in the water. So think of things along that line, and the clothes, and the freedoms, even during pandemics, to still kind of go where you want to go, even though a governor, or president, or mayor says <laughs> crazy. And then people out there to protect you, the law enforcement, people to come to your rescue, law enforcement, fire department, paramedics. Isn't that crazy? That is awesome. So you got it actually pretty good. I I know there's situations where um, financially it gets hard, but I would hope that we seek God in situations like that. I, I, I hope we really do, or when there's sickness or health conditions, I hope we seek God a little bit, a, a lot more when that stuff happens. And put it out there. Ask people to pray for you about that. That's when we all go to work. All angels go to work, and God goes to work, but he works through us. Works through us, but, um, yeah. So we come along, God comes along, and he rescues you. It was a rescue mission over 2,000 years ago uh, when Jesus stepped off his throne in heaven. and was born the virgin birth from Virgin Mary and Joseph in Bethlehem in a manger, what we celebrate on Christmas, and lived the perfect, sinless life for 30 plus years and then was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River and then was tempted in the desert for 40 days, 40 nights with Satan following him everywhere he went and trying to sway him away from the God, his, his father's word 
But Jesus was the word. He knew the word and he stayed focused against those attacks from Satan trying to offer him everything. Uh, <laughs> if he would just forget about his father and follow Satan. And, and then the disciples, finding the disciples, the 12 disciples, and all the people that followed him and ultimately to be the perfect sacrifice to fulfill God's will for, for his son's life, to be the, the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God, <laughs> Lamb of Lamb of God, you know, that we only needed one sacrifice to forgive us of our sins. So his body was broken for us, his blood was shed for us. And for for us who accept Christ, accept Christ as our master, as our Lord, Lord of our life, master of our life, and, and believe in the gospel of what happened and confess it with our mouth and open our hearts to it, yeah, we'll be saved. That's salvation. And then you will have eternal life. All right, and you have access to the Father in heaven, and you have the Holy Spirit. What more can you ask? The free gift, right? Pretty awesome stuff. So, so remembering that stuff, it's uh, pretty awesome. So God has a plan and purpose for all of us. <sighs> He's got a will for our lives. He's already put it inside of you. He's already given you those gifts and your talents. All right, your uniqueness. Now He's said not to have a spirit of fear or timidity, but a spirit of power and love and courage. Be strong and courageous, Joshua, and go take that land that I've already given you, all right? Or with with Noah and uh, Joshua just crossing the Jordan River when it looked like it was a flash flood, but it split again, just like the, the sea did for, for, for uh, Moses when he split it. Uh, so with Moses and, and Joshua, yeah, it happened again, and he'll do it again for us, and he's doing it right now in our lives. So um, remember that. Stay focused. Be in prayer. You have access to the Father who created everything, all right? Be in prayer. Read the Word of God. Just read some scriptures. Save some. Screenshot them. Save them. I save them all on my Facebook. If I upload a lot, it's because I am in the Word of God, but it's easy to access. If I go to all my photos that I uploaded, bam, there's all my favorite scriptures that I read. It's all saved in the cloud. <laughs> the hypothetical cloud. <laughs> so it's pretty awesome to always have quick access to the Word of God. Uh, yeah, cool. All right. Be in prayer, be in the Word of God. Like and share these things. Share them to a group. I'm going to start sharing them to a group. Uh, there's some groups out there that really need stuff like this. There's individuals out there that really need stuff like this. Uh, so pray, pray for your friends and your family if they're not, if they're going through anything or not going. If they're blessed, pray for them. People need prayer. I need prayer. My friends, my family does. My stepdaughters do. My ex-wife, which I dearly, truly still care about. My whole family, ex-wife, stepkids, their whole family lives one minute away from me over here. Uh, it's awesome. These are all people put in our life for a reason. We're supposed to be in relationship. There shouldn't be walls. God breaks down those walls on our heart and the walls in between people. So we're all built to be in relationships. So let's do that. So by loving God and loving people, no matter what they've done, it's unconditional love. We hate evil. We hate Satan. But uh, we're on rescue missions. And we're his soldiers. And we got to be obedient. All right? Love God. Love people. All right. Stay focused. See ya. Bye. Ooh.